to have you as part of this session. This is uh, John Gray, the CEO of Cask Data. That's right. Very excited to introduce you to him. Before he starts, though, I do want to let you know, uh, number one, there's a sign-up sheet going around, so if you could just put your name down on that. Uh, also, I just help pass it around when you're up your sign in. The other thing is that there will be a reception this evening at 6.30 p.m. on the patio terrace area outside of that big room on the fourth floor of the library. So if you've been to the fourth floor of the library, there's a patio up there. We'll be there at 6.30. Okay, John Gray, everyone. Thank you. So I really wanted to spend as much time as possible demoing and actually using the product. And so I'm going to do my best to fly through the content. Um, I'll be around after to take questions and stuff since only have 30 minutes. So I'll spend most of this time talking and flying. Um, so what I want to talk about today is Hydrator. Hydrator is a framework for building and running data pipelines on Doom, Spark, and the different storage engines around that way. And uh, what I'm going to talk about is a little bit quickly about kind of how we got to Hydrator, which is what my background is, what my company does, um, what our core product does. Hydrator is a piece of our core platform. And then the rest of the talk will be very specific about Hydrator. So really quick, my background is in the Linux and Postgres relational database world. Um, and then I became one of the early committers of HBase, which is a kind of NoSQL database in the Hadoop stack. And that landed me at Facebook, where I did a lot of large-scale Hadoop and database projects. And ultimately started Cask about four and a half years ago to provide a different type of developer experience for most people um, who are building on top of these new distributed scale-out uh, systems like Hadoop, like HBase, things like that. So Hadoop, if we look at what Hadoop is actually doing, what it actually means in terms of the use cases, the, the way enterprises and uh, individuals are getting value out of it, we really look at these three kind of core progressions of use cases. You start out with this, what's becoming this notion of the enterprise data lake, where you're doing ingestion, data integration, some SQL, some, some lightweight BI, enabling self-service data as a service kind of environments. Moving into more advanced use cases, building out customer 360 views, um, doing real-time dashboards, and more and more integrating different types of data. So now you're actually looking at your web logs, or you're looking at third-party data sources, you're looking at social media, um, doing things more in real-time. And then ultimately, this progression towards what we think of as data applications. And these are applications, which oftentimes touch the user, but analytics and the data are really a part of the value of that application. Really classic example to me is a recommendation engine. If I'm a large e-commerce company and I want to build a recommendation engine for my website, I don't really start out as building applications. I start out building data integration, data pipelines, things like that. And so our kind of goal as a company is to get businesses and developers down this path as fast as possible. And so we're a application development platform that really focuses on delivering these applications. But you have to get through all of these other things to get to those applications. And that's a lot of what Hydrator is about. So let's look at a use case. This is not loading correctly. Let's say I have this very simple like web analytics reporting use case. I have some web logs that are in S3. Once an hour, I want to move them into my Hadoop cluster for backup, archiving. I want to do some analytics, maybe some real-time reporting. I want to you know, look at the different HTTP codes. What are the mobile what are the most popular pages, all those types of basic kind of reporting things. Well, doing that in Hadoop is actually really challenging. So you're going to build kind of manual code-based ETL pipelines that are very brittle, they're hard to maintain. Oftentimes, if you're scheduling, you're using cron jobs and things like that that are hard to operationalize. You don't have a lot of uh, people with expertise in all of the individual components. And so oftentimes, there's only one person who can actually do anything with this, uh, these pipelines. Very hard to debug when there's failures. Oftentimes, you don't really know what's happening, and you just retry stuff until it works. Um, and then lastly, it's really hard to integrate into the other touch points that you want, which is you have SQL tools, you have BI and reporting tools that maybe require an ODC driver and SQL endpoints. Um, or you have a data scientist who wants to use R, wants to use Python. 
And how do you then create integration from your Hadoop cluster into all of those types of systems? And so even a very simple use case, which you could probably deliver with a EDW or a relational database in an afternoon, and Hadoop actually is quite complicated. And this is really, as I'm describing, kind of amplified by the fact that it's not just the development uh, kind of face that the new has, that I also need to interact with data scientists. Data scientists need access to the data that sits in the new. My uh, ops teams, my security teams, my governance organization, all that, they need to be part of this equation. And the line of business, the product team, maybe app developers, maybe business analysts. But ultimately, people who are making decisions, oftentimes people who are generating the reports, people who are the closest to the actual business problems being solved, versus people on the left side here who really are not so close to those business problems. And so the challenge in a lot of organizations that are trying to adopt Hadoop, that are trying to be more uh, big data centric, the tools are really missing to connect users and to take apps, take solutions from prototype through science development and into production. And organizations are really left basically cobbling together open source projects themselves and figuring out how to control this whole application lifecycle, development lifecycle, production lifecycle. So that's really what this company is all about, is trying to be a platform and integration framework on top of all of this technology that helps to accelerate uh, everything that's happening. So we've been around about four and a half years. Uh, my co-founder comes from Yahoo, I come from Facebook. Um, we have some really, really big customers, some really big partners. Um, we were a Gardner Pool vendor this year. And what we're building, we call the DAP, the Data Application Platform. And this is kind of a next generation architecture for how do you deal with this issue that we're having. And the issue is kind of multiplied by the fact that you now have cloud and hybrid type environments, not just these on-premise clusters. And on the top, these different kinds of users that you have that need access to this platform. CDAP is our core product. And this is an open source implementation of, of a data application platform. And it's this integrated framework that sits on top of your Hadoop distributions, either in the cloud or on-premise. And um, integrates with the latest and greatest in terms of Spark and Kafka. We're going to have our Flink integration soon. The, the newest projects we're always integrating it with. Um, and it's basically built for extensibility. It's built for platform teams to kind of make their own platform. Now, CDAP itself is really a developer platform and an operations platform. It's for the developer sitting in an IDE writing Java code or Scala code. Um, it's for the operations team, the management team, the security team. It's not really for the data scientist necessarily. It's not really for the business analyst. And that's what these things we call extensions are on top. Hydrator is one of those. So Hydrator. Hydrator is basically an application that sits on top of our application framework. And it provides this user interface to create data pipelines. And so it's implemented as an app on the platform, but manifests itself as, an inter as a UI and uh, a much, much easier user experience that now a data scientist, business analysts, um, and developers can do much faster. So this is also 100% open source, very, very extensible. Again, rich drag and drop UI. And it enables production. Anything that you build inside of this UI, when you hit the publish button, becomes an application running in CDAP. And so all of the production, governance, security, um, operations, things that CDAP deals with, you get for free with your pipelines. So there's really three core tenets of what Hydrator enables. First is data ingest. I need to take data from existing sources. That could be sitting in another Hadoop cluster. It could be sitting in an S3 bucket. It could be a REST API. It could be all a database, data warehouse. I need to be able to build my own custom ELT and ETL pipelines. I need to do transformations, parsing, encryption, data masking, all those types of things. And I need to be able to write that data out somewhere. Right? Very simple ETL. Um, and that's HBase, HDFS, it's also other NoSQL stores like Cassandra, things like um, Elasticsearch, back into the cloud. So Hydrator's data pipelines are all about ingesting, building, and egressing data. And they allow you to basically build arbitrarily complex workflows that do the data fetching, do any of the data transformations, do any of the data aggregations, um, push it out to other systems, and make that data available to other tools. 
So not just push it into HDFS, but also make it accessible via SQL. You know, give yourself an endpoint so you can point Excel at it, you can point Tableau at it. All right, let's just get through this. So Hydrator is built around the studio, and this is the drag and drop UI. I'll demo this. Um, but let's get to some more interesting stuff. So data pipelines look like this, right? It's like a deck. Um, Part of what iGenerator does for you is it automatically captures all the metadata, the audits, and the lineage information about these pipelines. And so I have this user activity directory over here, an HBase table, and a, and a time partition file set. If I look at those HBase tables and time partition file sets, I'll actually see lineage back to this, this active directory. And you don't have to do anything, the framework does that for you. And you also have scheduling, centralized monitoring, metrics, log collections, really, really easy, uh, um, easy to operate these data pipelines. Now, if I want to extend the types of things I can do here, there's a simple Java API to build your new sources, to build new transforms, to build new syncs. We have a, a GitHub repository called Hydrator Plugins that has all of the different plugins that we've implemented, that the community has implemented. You can also write your own JavaScript and Python transformations. Um, so, also, you have data scientists who maybe can't or don't want to write Java uh, transformations, but they can you know, bang out a little bit of Python, a little bit of JavaScript. Uh, in the latest version, you can also include arbitrary Spark jobs. So you can write your own Spark job, and you put this small little hydrator or class wrapper around it, either Spark in Java or Scala, and then include those also in your DAG. And that's um, kind of some of the cooler stuff about uh, hydrator. So there's a bunch of different stuff that Hydrator includes today, like most of the NoSQL databases, FTP sources, relational databases, data warehouses, uh, clouds like Azure and, and Amazon. Um, all the common transformations you'd expect, like parsing, JSON and CSV, and XML, doing encoding, hashing, masking. Um, we also support aggregations, so doing group buys and mistakes and things like that. Um, custom transformations and custom smart jobs. This is essentially what the transform API looks like. Transform, input, and output emitter. Really, really simple API. And this is kind of what I think is the coolest part. The geek and me love this part about Hydrator. So Hydrator is when you're in the studio and you're building your DAG, you're building what we call a logical pipeline. So I want to take data from this source and this source, and I want to do these transforms to it, I want to aggregate it in this way, I want to write it to that database, that database, and this file. It's very logical. Is that one MapReduce job? Is it four Spark jobs? How is that all being laid out? The Hydrator uh, pipeline builder doesn't really know how it's implemented, and that's intentional. Hydrator maps that logical pipeline to an actual physical workflow that wants to individual MapReduce jobs or Spark jobs. And so in between there is a planner. This is the thing that takes this logical plan and says, okay, well, if all I'm doing are transformations, well, all I need is a map. But if I'm doing a distinct, or I'm doing a group by, or I have a custom Spark job, well, that changes how my actual workflow needs to happen. And so Hydra takes care of that for you. And so it allows the user to, they don't even know if this is a simple one-line transformation or this is a complex Spark job that you know takes an hour to run. And there's good and bad parts to that, but ultimately, it abstracts the user from having to understand how it actually runs. And CDAP is the thing that takes that workflow and actually runs it. Right? So CDAP provides a workflow engine, the execution engine, but each step might be a Spark job, might be a MapReduce job. But CDAP, think of it as this orchestration layer. So that helps to answer your question. It also optimizes stuff, right? so it puts as much stuff in as few jobs as possible things like that, and CDAP provides that runtime environment, it gives all the centralized log collection, all the transactions, lineage, audit, capture, metadata. All right, last slide, and then we'll uh, get into the demo. So, Hydrator is under really, really, really active development right now. Um, we have a bunch of very large customers who are using this, and kind of co-developing it with us, and helping to drive the roadmap of it. Um, the first is joints. So right now it's single source in your pipelines. Um, in the next version you can have multiple sources and all different types of joint semantics, left, outer, inner, all that good stuff. Um, really cool feature that comes out in two weeks is the kind of live debug and preview. 
So as I'm building my pipeline, I can say, hey, take this test data and run it through the transformation and show me what the results look like. You can do it all from the user interface. Um, macro substitutions. So let's say that I have the same pipeline, but I want to run it against 100 different databases or 100 different tables, really common use case. Uh, the new version allows you to write a little macro and then to provide a list of the values and say, okay, run it for all those values. Uh, custom actions are a new type. So not just like source, transform, sync, but action. So hit a REST API or send an email or do something like that. Um, and then there's Spark streaming support in the next version. All right, let's see. Fifteen. Perfect time. Good. Oh, there's my dog. All right. So, CDAP is where we're starting. So, one of the things that's cool about CDAP is it's portable against different distributions and cloud and that stuff. But there's also a standalone version. And so, you just download it, hit start. It requires Java and it requires Node, uh, Node.js, because the UI is uh, written in Node. Once you have that, you get a fully functional version of CDAP. So Hive works and Spark works and HBase works, everything works, but you didn't even have to deal with any of that, that configuration. And I can get into my UI here. All right. And in case you're wondering, DAP is actually a slang term for a fist bump. <laughs> All right, so this is just a fresh installation of CDAP on my local host, right? So, um, use case, that's what I wanted to show. All right, maybe one more slide. So, here's the use case. I'm actually not going to load it from S3 because my internet connection has been a little bit flaky. Um, but basically, we, it's this web analytics example, right? So I have a web log like my Apache access web logs, essentially. And they're sitting in an S3 bucket, and I want to do a pipeline that loads it into the do, writes it into like some parquet file somewhere, and makes that accessible for SQL. And then I want to do some analytics against it. So I want to, in this case, I'll do a, uh, the total number of requests by the IP in the status code. Right? So I'll be able to basically see the popular IPs, um, and maybe I'll do uh, top URIs, the top URLs that have been hosted. And so the logs kind of look like that. Okay. So from CDAP, you can just jump into Hydrate here. These are what we call our extensions. I've got nothing built yet. So I'm in Hydrate now. There's three different uh, pipeline types, right? So the next version we have a Spark streaming type. Now you have data pipelines, batch, and real time. So data pipelines is in beta, and the difference between batch and data pipelines are these compute and model. And so this is a new feature which allows you to do arbitrary Spark jobs. So it's a new experimental feature in the last release. It's a production feature in the release two weeks from now. Um, but let's start building here. So I'm going to build my uh, web log importer. And I could start from S3, but just because the internet's not been totally behaving, I'm going to just pull from a file. I, I downloaded it from S3 earlier. So I got my file source. A reference name is how CDAP is going to track it. So I mentioned how CDAP is automatically capturing audits and metadata and things like that and lineage. So I've got this file. What do I want? Are you do you need some paper? Oh, I did. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. I don't need no, no worries. Okay. We need some paper. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. No worries. So, reference name is basically how does what what does CF call this thing once it knows about it? And so we're going to call it, you know, for my local web log. And the path, I think, yes. Thank God I have it in my clipboard. And that's all I need. All right. And just so you, so you can see it. It's just a web access log. Now I need to parse this up. So file, this is very weird because I'm so zoomed down. There we go. 
Can you still see that? Okay. Okay. So um, there's schema information that gets carried, right? So in this case, a file is going to emit offset and body. Offset is the line number, body is the string. So now we want to transform that, and we have a log parser. So it parses different kinds. This is a CLF log. The input name is body. And then it automatically populates that output schema. And now let's decide what we want to actually do with this data. So let's write it to the parquet, parquet files. So this is um, TPFS is time partitioned file set. So um, each time a new, every time this job runs, it will create a new partition inside of the parquet files and a new partition inside of Hive. So I'll give this a name. These are my web logs part A. And that's all I need to do. So when I create this pipeline, a underlying HFS directory will get created, a data set will get created. Now let's also do something more interesting. Let's do a group by here. So let's group by, we said we wanted to take the IP and the HTTP status. And we want to aggregate by HTTP status. We want the count. And we'll call that the status count. So this is basically a decomposed SQL query. <laughs> uh, my favorite new feature that we just launched is the get schema button. So once I've given the parameters, I can just say, hey, give me the schema for what this is going to output as a schema and then apply that, right? So here's the input, here's my config, this becomes the output. I get the IP, the HP status code, and then I count the status. Okay? So now let's write that out somewhere. This one, maybe just for fun, we'll write to a, an HBase table. But since that's a table and not a file, we need a, a primary key. Um, We'll need HTTP and, and IP uh, actually appended to each other. So in that case, we can just do like a JavaScript transform here. And I can say input.key is like input.ip plus input.htp status. And then add that to the output. And then I'll write this table. These are my uh, web log analytics. The row is key. And so this is actually going to create the underlying HBase table for you, register that hive as well. Um, all right, that's probably enough. Or we said one, one other one. Let's do another uh, for fun. Let's group by the URI. I just want to do a count. And we'll write that to a snapshot of the Abro file. Because why not? So this is web, this is a top URIs. All right, so we built this thing visually. Behind the scenes, this is actually all a JSON configuration, right? So you can export this, you can re-import it, you can check it in. The whole macro substitution thing I'm talking about, you put the macros into the JSON, right? So everything in CDAP and all of Hydra and everything is just built on top of REST APIs. So you can drive the whole platform to REST if you're not using the UI, right? So that's why when people get into production, Start to operationalize our platform, they're oftentimes moving out of the UIs to production and they're just getting REST APIs and building tools around this. So, in this case, I'm going to oh, one other piece of magic. So, I mentioned before how you're building logical pipelines. So, this is actually not prescriptive about MapReduce or Spark, right? So, the way that all these are built, you can run this whole pipeline in MapReduce or in Spark. So, that's just configuration. So, we'll do Spark because that's what's cool. So now this is actually generating this application. Um, and now it's sitting 
as an application that is available, and I will run it and get it kicked off. So you can look at now the run history, the logs of this, metrics as this thing actually starts to run, these, these metrics will get populated. Um, we didn't configure post run actions, but you can send emails and things when things uh, are done. And you know, if you're kind of a non-developer, non-operations, you might stay in the CY. But you can also look at the actual application and see that now. And that's when you're going to actually look at the Spark jobs, look at what's underlying this. So here we see we have an application in CDAP called the Weblog Importer. So if you remember, CDAP was empty before, but now it's got this Weblog Importer, which is an application of Pipe Data Pipeline. And we've created these three different data sets, the top URIs, the Weblog Spark, and the Weblog Analytics. Within that, we see that there's this workflow, and there's these three Spark jobs. And so this is running on, I don't know, it's about 20,000 lines or something like that. It's about a minute to run. Um, so I'll look at the rest of the seat app really quick here. So, I don't know, let's do something else fun. So I was just like seeing how easy it would be. Elasticsearch is actually a very easy to use uh, piece of software as well as far as getting it running on your laptop and just playing around. So you can download Elasticsearch, hit bin Elasticsearch, download Kibana, hit bin Kibana. Hopefully this loads. Yeah. And Kibana starts to show up with all of your indexes in here. And you can then go in to see that. Hydrator. And let's say, so you can clone this pipeline, which basically puts you back into the build mode. And let's, um, five minutes, it's all going to come together right now. There we go. Are you ready? Let's look at all this stuff. Weblog importer elastic. Let's write it to our elastic search. This is a local elastic. Local host, write to my demo index, type log, ID field, actually, I'm saying. Uh, and the nice thing about Elastic is if the index doesn't exist that you're writing to, it just creates an index for you as well. So, really, really easy, and then you can jump into a Kibana. And you'll see them, you know, you'll see your index show up here. You can start to, this is what I was playing around before. I don't have time to generate it today, but you can generate some kind of analytics and stuff off of it. So um, this tool makes it super, super easy to write into all these other tools. And you can do it from your laptop. Now, we promised that we actually wrote data. So let's look at our parquet. We should see raw data, but parsed out into the fields. We should be able to look at our analytics. See what we got here. And we should be able to look at our top URIs. Inspect the data there. So let's go by URI uh, right time descending. Any properties, there aren't any user properties, but you can associate any key values you want with it. 
And then you can also look at the actual lineage of this. So here's my web logs parquet. I can see that in the last seven days, only one job wrote to it, and that job only read from one source, which was this local web log. Right? So you remember I gave that reference name? That's what's showing up here. So we can go and say, you can even look at the local web log. So this is what we call an external data set. This is not named to do, it's just the file that was on my hard drive where it's just the S3 bucket. But we still capture all the metadata. So what were the path, what time did you do the set, um, things like that. Um, what were the other jobs that read to it, right? So we can go back to that local web log and we see, well actually there was two different jobs that read to it. We can see that local elastic now, right? And there's audit, so, you know, the only data access, for example, is a write from a Spark program. Um, and it captures all this kind of detailed run information and everything like that. And I think I'm probably out of time. All right. Thank you. CDAP is open source. Cast.co slash downloads. And you can download it, run it on your laptop. Um, very, very easy. Follow me on Twitter or uh, hit me up. We're also a uh, commercial enterprise, so we sell software and services. So if you need help or whatever, you can help me. Um, that's it. Thank you.